Are you struggling with the networking portion with vSphere with Kubernetes? In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the networking correctly so that you can successfully set up a vSphere with Kubernetes clusters. Hi there. In the first part, we'll start with the design, talk about some of the reasons why did I did this lab. So since it's the, this is going to be heavy on networking, we could talk a bit more on the VDS config and as well as the NSXT manager. So let's start with the why. So I'm sure that many of the my colleagues, you know, as well as customers, they are uh, so vSphere 7 is new. They wanted to try out vSphere with Kubernetes. Uh, some of them might be testing this in their own environment. Uh, they might not have a lot of hardware as well as uh, NIC cards, right? So um, I want to test this with uh, a single NIC. So um, people who have like the Intel NUX, they would be able to do this uh, at home or in their, in their lab. And um, there's some intricacies that uh, on this setup, I will try to explain in this video. And of course, uh, in um, you know, I did the beta testings right before the um, GA version. So in beta, the vCenter, there's a requirement for the vCenter to be uh, running within the clusters itself, right? This might be good for lab. And uh, actually, in fact, um, you know, I, I might want to test that setup where the vCenter is running in the clusters with the GA version. Typical in most of the production environment, especially like whether is it uh, VMware validated design or the VMware Cloud Foundation design, which is based on VVD, usually the Compute vCenter is not running um, within the clusters itself. It is actually running in the management clusters. So, you know, this is going to be different from the beta. I'm going to test it in uh, my design as well. The other thing that is different from the beta is uh, the NVDS uh, in the beta, uh, we only supported uh, NVDS. So for those who are not aware, in NSXT 3.0, we actually have this new VDS. So we call it the Converge VDS, or you know, um, in short, it's just VDS. Uh, so it looks and uh, it looks like just your normal VDS, right? So um, you know, I have not tried it. Uh, especially, you know, NSXT with uh, Converge VDS or, the, or just VDS. Uh, so we're going to use this VDS to put our vSphere Kubernetes clusters on it. So that's the three reasons why I wanted to test it with this lab. Of course, you can uh, put in more NICs. That's not a problem over here. And, um, you know, probably I will also test, um, you know, vMotion and vCenter into uh, the same compute cluster. But that's, again, another video. Yeah, so basically these are the components that you need, vSphere 7, and you have the vSAN, you can use vSAN, or, you know, it could be any other data store itself, vSphere data stores, like NFS, right? Of course, on the networking security portion, we'll be using NSXT3. Uh, I have put down all the links over here, so that you can actually download um, the software. Let's talk about uh, what are the software requirements, or the resources uh, requirements. So that you can actually plan uh, what hardware you actually want to have. So for the management clusters, um, uh, in this case, right, uh, compute vCenter. I'm using the, the small uh, setup. Uh, it's basically uh, four CPU and about 20 gig of RAM, right? And then you had an NSXT manager. Um, if it's a production setup, you need three. But in lab, you can have one NSXT manager, and, and uh, you are good at it. For the compute clusters, that's where you run. So in this case, I'm going to test the NSX HVMs, although the NSX HVMs, um, you know, you can place it in the management cluster as well. But, you know, like a lot of um, people is going to test this in their lab. I want to validate that the NSX HVMs is going to work in the compute clusters and you have a single NIC on it. All right. So once you created the uh, NSX environment where you want to prepare the clusters for vSphere with Kubernetes, you need uh, supervisor clusters, three VMs. I forgot to put a 
comes through here. So you have three VMs over here and class, guest clusters, you have another three over here. This is because I have one Kubernetes masters as well as the two worker nodes. So now to the networking uh, requirements. So this is more on the planning phase. You need to plan all these segments to be available. Um, so port signer is basically the networking for where you create all the, the ports. Um, so it will be segmented into smaller segments like slash 28 and that's being managed by NSXT. Um, so this is the default and um, I'm actually using this in the lab. Service cider it's when you create the Kubernetes service and um, the IP address will be drawn from this pool. All right. Uh, the other two that cider range it's the ingress cider. That's where like for example you are creating a, a ingress on your Kubernetes clusters. They will pick up the address from here or you create a load balancer you will also pick up the address from here. So you can actually create this as a additional subnet or the uplink subnet, right? So uh, in my case, I prefer it to be an additional subnet. So I will create a different subnet when you see later on, different from the uh, uplink address, right? For the egress, this is also different. Although you can, again, you can also craft out a, a segment from uplink segment. So in, uh, I believe NSXT 2.5 on those, we actually support uh, for you to use, you know, virtual IP address or floating pool from the uplink segment as well. So this is, for example, if any of the ports needs to be, uh, assess any uh, network outside of your um, community clusters, that is actually from the Okay, so so let's talk about the network over here. You can see over here. So I'll start off with orientating you the diagram. So you have the management cluster over here, and you have the vSphere compute clusters over here. So this is where your the ESXi nodes. I have three nodes over here. These these are running the HBMs. So for the logical network, when you create the Kubernetes ports, they will grab the IP address from uh the 10 244 segment right so these are the ports networking i believe that's what it calls port side range okay uh it also uses for the network when it creates the tkg clusters over here so the other one is the services range so when you create a, the kubernetes uh, cluster service you will actually grab the ip address from uh over here right with the side range the services side range okay so the other two networks which is the ingress or egress an egress network so i've created two additional subnets for it these are the two networks that is needs to be unique on uh, on your physical network right uh, this the rest of the networks are pretty much internal to the to the uh, kubernetes systems these two are the network you need to route uh, on your physical router into your nsxt domain so basically for those people who are not familiar with uh, NSXT, maybe I'll explain a bit here. So T0 is the uh, gateway where you interface with the physical networks and T1 routers are obviously distributed routers um, in the NSXT agents as well as in the hypervisor host. So as I mentioned, um, the networks, could you could use the networks that is on these H uplinks over here for the ingress and egress but in my case uh, i've really created additional networks over here so that you know for a larger scale i can actually have more subnets so that's pretty much for the four networks uh, that you probably need to configure in the the workload management right so now we can talk about the physical network right so i've talked about the management network which i'll mostly my vCenter and NSXT manager will be and the ASXI management which is over here uh, 116 then for you know I also created a network for vMotion right? but that's pretty self-explanatory tree um, you need a transit network that talks to the for the T0 router to talk to the physical network so you know which is over here right I created another VLAN 197 for it yeah so 
you know, this is where I configure the, I have assigned the whole segment to be configured for the ingress uh, and egress. So pretty much like I created a slash 16 on my router to route the networks inside. So, you know, I'm actually using static route over here. So I do not need to each time when I want to use a 1030 or a slash 24 subnet from the 1030 range, I need to go and configure my physical network over here. The next two things is uh, I kind of highlighted in blue over here is uh, things that you need to pay attention. Uh, this is especially for when you are using a physical, uh, a single physical NIC and um, you want to run the ages on the compute cluster as well. So this is the physical diagram um, network topology. So let me orientate you a bit, a bit. So you have the EXXI holes over here and you have the NSXT ages running in the EXXI hypervisor. So when you're running um, Journey of Overlay, uh, there is a tunnel endpoint is basically, you know, if it's running on the ESXi, it is actually a VM kernel interface. We're running NS60 ages, it's actually running as interface in the HVMs. So if you are running the ages uh, in the same ESXi holes as the transport node, you need two VLANs, right, uh, as a workaround or rather as a solution. I've used VLAN 120 uh, for the EXXI VM kernel interfaces and you actually need another subnet for the HVM's tunnel interfaces or tunnel endpoints, right? So that it will force the traffic out to the physical link whenever the HVM's wants to communicate with the the transport node, right? The NSXT transport nodes, right? So in this case, for example, the traffic coming out from the H, uh, which is this yellow color line on VLAN 114, it will go to physical router, it will route, and then you come into the VLAN 120 and it goes into the transport node over here, right? This is when you want, you only have a single NIC and, you know, this, I, I purposely make it a single NIC so that to prove that this actually works if you have additional NICs, you can also do that. Uh, with that, then you do not need to create another VLAN, right? Or you can use the same VLAN, but you need to create another VDS and put the HVMs or place the, or rather the HVMs will use the network, the VDS network or the port groups that is on the other VDS on a separate NIC. 